Good evening, commanders. You'll just have to forgive me just for a moment. My camera is having a display mode malfunction. <laughs> Bear with me. I am here. I am here. The cloaking device has decided not to switch itself off, which is <laughs> it's just, just one of those things. Don't you hate computers? I hate computers. Uh, <laughs> I don't know what's wrong with it. Oh, this is annoying. Why does it always break? <laughs> when I least expect it. Ah dear. Never mind. Right, hang on a minute. Hang on a minute. There's must there must be a there's there's a thing. There's a thing that is, is not right. Black black is always fashionable. It is. Um I just wish things wouldn't break when <laughs> Ah, hang on, it's waking up. It's back. Is it working? Yes! Yay, there it is. Ah. Uh, Welcome one and welcome all to the highly professional, uh, <laughs> totally slick uh, <laughs> space retro, kind of, well, space video game stream we call it now because sometimes we do modern stuff and most, a lot of the time we do retro stuff. But today we are actually going to be doing something new. So that's going to be good. Um, so yes, apologies, uh, apologies for that. I, I, where's my, yeah, my background is still working. This is good. Okay, so... <laughs> Before we break anything else, my friends, uh, let's do the thing. thing. Now, for those of you, I've, I've spotted a couple of first time chats in the stream tonight. So welcome to anybody who is new here. Uh, this is a very relaxed and very informal stream. So if you're expecting incisive <laughs> to the point and incredibly, incredibly detailed, uh, no nonsense. Uh, <laughs> uh, explanations of things. This is not the stream for you. OK. <laughs> <laughs> this stream uh, can get sidetracked quite easily, I'm afraid. But we're we're a friendly bunch, um, and we like space games, and uh, that's that's pretty much it, really. So, um, and we have traditions, and before we must start the stream, there is a tradition that we must do, and we call it the thing because the thing is the thing, and the thing must be done. So, whatever we do, we will do the thing. And what that basically is is for some bizarre reason, which has now been lost in the immense depths of time on this stream, is I have to read out everybody who's in the chat up until the point I get to the bottom of the chat and then we stop. Uh, why? I don't know. It's just, but yeah, it'd be bad luck if we didn't do it. So we're going to do it. Uh, anyway, let's find out who's first in the chat. It is rather surprisingly, and I think possibly for the first time ever, Arrakis is in the chat first. So congratulations to Arrakis. Well done. Um, as ever, fighting off the, Har uh, the invasion of the Harkonnens. Uh, which <laughs> most of you will now know what that's all about, having watched the uh, June films. And uh, well, congratulations to Rekus for being, a first being in the chat and fighting off the invasion of the Harkonnens. Obviously, if you're getting up that early in order to get on the stream first in the chat, then the, the Harkonnens don't stand a chance. So that's that's excellent news. Blogtwot is here as well. Good to see you. The Harkonnens are here as well, of course. Uh, <laughs> we need to invade Arrakis, but a bit behind the curve this evening. So uh, they're obviously not going to be successful today. Uh, Winterbeat GB is here. Of course, of course he is. Aridagus is here. Jeej is here. Have a boo boo is here. With four thumbs up that is always good to see ugly spirit is here grumpy athelion is still being grumpy hopefully uh, one of these days we're going to cheer him up but you never know top shot is 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 actually not in top place as per usual he's probably about eighth or ninth in the stream so that's, that's a really poor showing top shot i think you need to sort yourself out uh andy p783 is here as well uh big 39 gt is here as well tin man uk is here i'm in the chat for reasons that won't become clear um orkney sean is here from the far-flung isles of orkney Good to see you. Erid and Dundragon uh, is done dragoning, uh, as usual. Uh, it, yeah, all the dragoning has to be done uh, early on in the, in, the, in the day, really. Yeah, you, you want to have done your dragoning by this time of the evening, so that's good. Chris F0001 is here as well. The Generic Boy is here. That's a great, that's a good name. Uh, <laughs> Cosmic Hell is here as well. Halfblood74. We have a first time chat from Ru, Ruin, maybe. Ruin underscore. Ru, Ru3N underscore or something. Anyway, good to see you. Uh, always nice to see some new folks. Um, the Big Boo is here, ready for the evening's wafflings. Uh, <laughs> Retro81 is here. Little Graham is here. Um, how are we doing? Lucky Luigi is here. Good to see you. My own Toxin is here. Uh, Ugly Spirit is here. <laughs> <laughs> Yotaplex is here. Um, that opening music was so retro, I almost tried to put coins into the USB slot. <laughs> Good. <laughs> Good indeed. Beast Snooker is here as well. Abstract players here. Aquarius 3555 is here. Dave Soft says I seem familiar. Well, uh, we, we do our best. Uh, Safraid 75 is here. Eric Loss uh, is here as well. Uh, <laughs> first time chat from Paul's Adski. Um, hi from a very distant future where you forget to ask for parking of your guild for 10 seconds. <laughs> oh, yes. Name <laughs> me no names. Um, 
Right, okay, so, uh, bu, 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 bu. right, where have we got to? Commander Treasure Blue 21 and Winter Mutual. No, I've missed somebody. Uh, Bloody is here as well. Good to see you. Um, I saw somebody else in the chat. Where have they gone? Where have they gone? Where have they gone? Um, Claire! <laughs> How could I possibly miss Claire? Now, Claire is very important to the stream. Okay, we'll find out about, about that in a bit. Um, sorry about that, Claire. I just <laughs> scrolled straight past. <laughs> That's not very good. I've reached the bottom. Uh, there we are. Claire Bob. Yes, me! Lots of attention. Uh, quite right as well, <laughs> for reasons that will become clear. Right, we've done that. that that's silliness. Now, um, tonight's stream is not Homeworld 2. You may have spotted that. Those of you who are uh, actually plugged in awake and aware of things um, will have spotted that. We are doing something different. Now, um, we have played this game before. Um, Starship Simulator is kind of pretty much what it says on the tin. If you've ever had the idea uh, of... <laughs> Of, of flying a starship through space and let's be honest if you're on this stream you will have done right because you're my kind of people uh space exploration we we as a generation uh, or as kind of a period in history are kind of stuck between two worlds right in you know a few hundred years ago the earth wasn't explored so there was lots of exploration to do there are lots of places on the planet where nobody had really been um and there, there are still a few but i don't think there are many left and there certainly aren't many left that are easily accessible right um and we're, we're also sort of stuck before whatever generation is that finally goes off into space and goes out to explore things. Because so we don't have the tech yet. We can't even get to the moon reliably. In fact, we can't even get into Earth orbit reliably half the time. So, you know, we're sort of stuck between two great um, expanses of exploration that hopefully humanity will one day get, get into. And, and yet, here we are, right? So what do we do in the meantime? Fortunately for our generation... Um, computer simulation power has got to the stage where it can create a very convincing facsimile of space for us to enjoy. So whereas we can't necessarily go off to explore space uh, itself, uh, which, which, which would probably be very uh, uncomfortable for a lot of the period of time, we can pretend, and this is the best bit, okay, so we can go off and pretend to explore space um, and, and have lots and lots of fun doing it and, uh, and stuff. And that's what this is all about. So, um, um, what 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 are we going to show now these guys um, um starship let me put it on the screen because um you don't want to just be looking at me that would be very very boring so this is a well it's a it's a demonstration game it's a very good demonstration game and the, and the purpose of tonight's stream is to really give these guys a little bit of a, as, as much of a lift up as i can okay uh in terms of, of visibility because this is a this is a relatively small project um and but it has hugely lofty ambitions. I've just realised the chat um, has um, is, um, is is kind of in my head. So let me <laughs> just move that up. Um, so um, so yeah. So um, this is a game called Starship Simulator, and it pretty much does what it says on the tin. Okay. So if you've ever had the idea of flying a a a uh, well a faster than light travel starship, I won't use the W word. <laughs> We've got to be very careful about not using certain words, right? Um, but um, we, um, if, if you've ever had the idea of, well, you know, sort of um, uh, <laughs> courageously going where no one's courageously gone before, then this is going to be the game for you, right? If you, if you want to visit um, um, unusual new worlds and, uh, and uh, <laughs> explore the possibilities of new life and things like that, right? And maybe embark on some sort of remarkable multi-year mission uh, to... to <laughs> to do stuff right uh, then this is going to be the game for you now this is a very important moment for this game okay so this game has been in development for for, for, for a few years now we actually we did a little bit of it last year as well uh, but it's it's at a very important point because um, the guys who are creating it are literally and I mean literally uh, in the next day going to be launching a Kickstarter okay um and i'm hoping that because because claire is claire's in the stream and i'm hoping dan may be around as well uh between the two of them they'll be able to answer any questions we have about what they're actually uh, hoping to achieve with the game and i want to sort of showcase the game a little bit as well in tonight's sort of stream so um claire says claire says dan will be here very very soon that's excellent news um so one guy named Dan plus Claire. Okay, so that's the team, right? So when you see what they've already achieved, you will, you will, we will I can guarantee you'll be flabbergasted. Some, a lot of people on the stream will have already seen this game, but um, um, what, they're, what they're aiming for and 
you know, is, is, is an incredible, incredible thing. And it needs, it needs more visibility. It needs more support. So why, why, why is this a big deal? Well, um, for those of you who know me, I've always loved space games. I, I grew up on um, you know, the original Elite back in 1984, um, you know, various versions of, of all sorts of computer games, Wing Commanders and all those kind of things in the in the 80s and the 90s and, and, and all that kind of stuff. But, you know, as much as, as fun as sort of pew pew space combat is, and yeah, we all like a little bit pew pew, right? But um, this one um, is, has, is, is an exploration focused game, okay? Uh, yeah, so it's it's about getting out there, finding out about stuff, and you you know, problem solving in the depths of space, and basically getting at what the hell is out there in the universe. So um, this is only the second game I can think of, and uh, you know the other game that we do stream occasionally at the moment, Elite Dangerous. Obviously, it does have a one to one scale replica of the Milky Way galaxy, which is a pretty damned impressive thing, right? I think we can all agree that. This game has this has one too. It's not the same version of the galaxy, as it were, but this game has a one-to-one -one, um, scale model of the galaxy too. So that's that's a thing, right? And um, it's 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 not it's not the same game clearly, but it's got that kind of ethos in mind, right? So it's um, it's it's all about exploration and going to actual real places. Um, as, far, you know, as far as we know, it's based on proper scientific principles as far as we can work them out. Obviously, there's going to be some game elements in there. Um, we have FTL travel, otherwise a game exploring the one-to-one -one scale universe would be pretty dull, right? <laughs> We're on our way to Alpha Centauri. Uh, okay, <laughs> see you in eight years. <laughs> I could probably write that game. <laughs> um, so... Um, <laughs> Just, just a just a just a blank backdrop with a dot that slowly gets bigger. Um, so uh, so yeah so you know so it's 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 all about um, uh, space exploration in a in a in a realistic galaxy. But okay, but even better than that, this features a starship. Okay, so it's not like a combat. Well, it, I mean, it can be a combat vessel potentially. We'll find out a bit more about the actual vessel. But it's it's not just a, a small ship that jumps between points in the galaxy and then you know and, and that's it. Um, this is a working starship, right? This is a working starship. So it's 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 got insides, right? <laughs> It's it's got a lot of insides, in fact, uh, and we will we'll, we will see that. So um, let me just let me just start giving you a little bit of an orientation first. So we're going to start start the game um, and just have a look around. I'm going to start in single player mode because it's multiplayer as well. There's a lot to, there's a lot to explore about this game, and I've only got kind of two hours to do it, and I've already waffled for twelve minutes. So let's let's get in there. I'm just going to tweak the audio down a little bit there. So let's start a new mission. I'm going to start from scratch. Okay. Um, so um, I'm going to wipe. I don't know what my original said. Now, okay. So now here's here's the interesting thing. As I haven't um, fired this up for a little bit. So we are starting with a Magellan class starship, okay. Um, and it looks, you know, here, here's his other starships that are, are in principle in the future of the game. So that's that's going to be the thing. So this one's basically saying uh, crew combat full and it's flight ready. So you do have the option to actually go and start up the starship. So for those of you who like your sim aspects, right, this is the game for you. You can act, all, all the systems in the Starship require configuration and control. And if you want to do the entire thing, starting the Starship from cold, you can, right? So you, it's, got a, it's got a central power system. It's got distributed systems. It's got all sorts of tech, right, aboard, which needs management. The idea being that this game can be multiple players as well, with different players having different roles. Okay, so I'm going to start it in the simple mode, just to give you an orientation. So here we go. Uh, we're going to go flight ready, so I haven't got to switch any switches, because, of course, I would love to... <laughs> I haven't had time to learn how to uh, fire up a, a, a starship, so um, that is something maybe we will explore. But uh, let's, get, let's, let's just give you a quick orientation of the ship. Because this this ship actually is a place, right? It's 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 got interiors. It's got gameplay associated with the inside of the ship as well as the outside of the ship. And we we've materialised here, and we are standing in 
uh, I think, which is like a briefing room. I think this is where we spawn in. So we, I imagine, I'm just going to walk around. So um, it's probably remember something says, I think the default location here is going to be um, uh, the soul system. Claire, correct me if I'm wrong. And, and Claire, jump in. So Claire, um, Claire and Dan, well, Dan is the developer and Claire does everything else, which if I know these sort of uh, <laughs> sort of things is a lot. OK, so everything else covers a huge amount of stuff. So um, um, so we will be in Seoul. OK, so we start off un not unreasonably in the Seoul system. And I th as I understand, the law of this is that we've this is the first time sort of humanity. Humanity has sort of, you know, kind of got its act together a bit. Right. And we are. Um, we are. Um, you know, embarking on exploration of the galaxy. We haven't really done much exploration yet. So it's kind of, this is the first time we get out there in a half decent starship, right? So, you know, we have a ready room where we can we can have conversations and various other bits and pieces. You may have noticed uh, as I loaded it up that um, it's also built on Unreal Engine 5. So that gives you an idea of the sort of tech requirements here uh, in terms of things. It's, it's running very nicely on my machine. Um, um, and... Um, so uh, yeah, the, the the design has got some. I, I think it's fair to say that the design has got some, uh, um, you know, familiarity. However, what I will point out for those of you who may have noticed my slight tongue-in-cheek, uh, not references to a certain famous television franchise uh, and film franchise, to be fair, um, is that the idea of a saucer for a starship um, predates the 1960s. Uh, most famous uh, space exploration television show by some considerable margin. So, uh, yes, you may have noticed some similarities, but I don't think that's actually uh, necessarily uh, what you think it is. But anyway, um, here we are in a, a briefing room. Now, I, th I don't know. I'm just trying to remember. I can customize. So here's, here's a bunch of stuff. OK, so let's just talk about, you know, I'm, I think I ended up being, who did I end up being? Um, I, I, my, my namesake, Alessia Verdi, is, is I think, Am I, well, I, am I the captain? I'm command. I am. I am the captain of the starship. Okay, so that's good. So we're going to stick with that. Um, so I can. I've got character customization for a start. I can sit in a chair and do things. So you know, we can. We can. We can sit around the conference table and decide what the hell we're going to do about some stuff, right? Uh, <laughs> which is which is good. Um, there is going to be a level of interaction to things as well. So check out this. Whereas there's, as you can see there is a mug and a pad on the table there. And so I am, um, and I'm just trying to, oh, I was in my seat. Oh, that was right, yeah, I can sit in the seat and I can move around in my seat. <laughs> it's just, so there's gonna be opportunities for racing up and down the corridors in your <laughs> in your swivelly seat. Now, um, uh, which, which would be very childish to do, I can't see any of us doing that at all. Uh, <laughs> um, now I'm just trying to remember how do I um, Claire you'll be able to tell me how do I pick things up uh, is, it, is it shift or something no that's crouch okay which I've now managed to okay I'm just trying to mouse click oh so it's just mouse click right okay so there I've got the ability to physically interact with the world inside the ship so I can as you can see pick the mouse oh and that's right and then I can use the scroll wheel to move it forward and back. Okay, so I've got the option, as you can see, to interact with physical items in the ship as well. So that's quite cool, um, As you, uh, yeah, apart from just the thing. The other thing we can do is the ship has lots of interactive controls, right? So here we are looking out the window on what I remember I think is the port side of the ship. But the rooms have panels, so I can put polarization on, which will reduce the glare of the sun to make it visible, or I can switch that off and have the entire un uninterrupted light of the sun filtering. I've also got things like these um, lovely scene projections. So I can basically say, if I don't fancy looking out into space, I can <laughs> I can switch on what appears to be sort of a hologrammatic um, view out the window. So, you know, there's a nice country scene that could be quite possibly in the UK somewhere, nice in the autumn. And I've got lots of options. There we are, Autumn Park, uh, Misty Forest. So you can customize how the rooms work okay so there's lots of lots of lovely little attentions to detail like that um, um, in the way that the ship interacts and allows you to just be part of the ship so we are on board the ship and if I um, I can switch the room lights on and off there we go 
and switch it back on again. Yeah, so there's a lot, uh, I, I can even change the color temperature. How cool is that? Um, as I walk through the doors, they open, obviously, because it's a spaceship. Now, the technology involved here, we do, a, we obviously have anti-gravity tech in this universe. So that's that's the thing. And we will go to the bridge in a minute. But, uh, oh, is that, oh, is that the command deck? Is that the bridge? No, that's the bridge up there. So we will go that way in a minute. But along the central corridor, there are other sort of rooms which will be used for various things. You can see here is an armory, which at the moment isn't implemented in the game. Uh, there's also the captain's office, which uh, clearly is mine. So over here on what is now the, I guess, actually, no, I probably got that wrong, actually. We were on the port side of the ship, on the starboard side of the ship. That's the bridge, though. This is the port side of the ship. So, and out of the window, we can see that we are in, presumably, some sort of stationary orbit around the Earth. Not a bad place um, to start, right? Um, so... Um, Oh, OK, there's a there's a quick reference key. I think it's behind the webcam. Brilliant. OK, um, so again, on my desk over here, you can see that there are things to interact with. There is uh, some instructions. So again, uh, I can see here. Uh, I'm not sure what that's about, but it looks very complicated and informal and, and, and good stuff. There's a tablet there which I can pick up and you know, and, and things have things are able to interact, which is which is great. Um, so I can sit in my chair and just observe my domain which is fantastic um so you know the rooms and the ability to interact with the ship is, is a big deal we'll see a little bit more of that as, as we tour the ship now um up there is the bridge which we will go to in a minute when we start moving the ship around because that's one of the beauties there's no point having a starship you can't fly right so um we will be able to do that in a moment but I'm going to take you, this is the centre of the saucer section at the high level of the bridge. And we have, um, you know, seating areas where we can interact. Um, there's even an apple there, look. Um, it's, it's a place where you and your mates in multiplayer are going to be able to chill out between missions and decide what to do, okay, um, and interact. And uh, yeah, the ship interior here is a real working interior. You can see we've got a lift there that's going up and down, which I believe at the moment is just in automatic mode. But um, so we'll wait for it to come back up. Here we go. And the doors will open. There we go. So we can walk into the lift. It will take us down to what is effectively the recreation deck of the ship. Here we go. Um, and here I'm, uh, you know, there's, there's lots of things like this. <laughs> there's, there's a space bar. <laughs> God for that. Uh, <laughs> um, you know, so the fact that there's, there's a post-it note at the bar which just says work in progress. I don't remember seeing that before. That's quite cool. Um, so, but, you know, we can share, share. Oh. <laughs> As you can see, uh, I'm already drunk. Um, but, you know, we can, we can interact. Help yourself. I did. And I dropped it on the floor. Let me go and see. If, where did it go? There it is. I better pick it up. I don't, I don't like leaving things in untidy so that I, yeah so there we go i'm going to put it back on the table there we go so it's not on the floor but i knocked it over so apologies for that um you know level of interaction there is a bar we can we can have a drink uh, and we can kind of chill out there's a there's a you know there's a zone here now this backdrop out the back of course is going to sit exactly um it's going to it's going to be showing whatever the starship is near so if you're near a nebula or a black hole or anything along those lines that's the view you're going to get out of the window OK, in fact, you can come down here when the ship is moving and watch it traveling through space at hyperspeed velocity. So everything is visible and the ship will be doing stuff while you're wandering around or your mates are wandering around and all those kind of good things. OK, and uh, and, and virtual reality is planned as well. So, you know, it's going to be insane to be in here with your friends and flying around on the starship, which is which is doing stuff and going going places. Right. There's even a piano which. Um, which believe legend has it is is going to be able to be hooked up to a MIDI keyboard. So I will be able to terrorize you with uh, with various MIDI themes. And as you can as you can hear, so um, so you know we <laughs> we can we can play. It will be hooked up as soon as possible, says Claire. So so yeah, or, or we could we could we could take some sort of space theme. Um, Or, 
or stuff, right? Um, the attention to detail is phenomenal. Why, why, there, why there's a piano on the Starship? Well, I mean, it's, it's, it's good, right? And there's lots of other things to come in, in that kind of regard. So, um, yeah, so <laughs> in-game hyperspace jumps with actual live play music. I mean, can you imagine what, what could be done with, with, with this sort of thing? Um, so there's a lot of, in the idea being everything is interactive inside this starship and there are lots of rooms that yet have as you can see haven't been completed haven't been developed but you know there's a potential here for uh, a galley and various other bits you know, there's a baguette um, and, and there's food about so and all these items will be interactable um, and various other bits and pieces so there's another one around here which i think you know so the design what what dan what dan has done here is he's designed a starship that is actually supposed to work Okay, as a practical proposition. Okay, it's make believe, right? But it's been thought through. It's not just chuck a collection of rooms together and hope for the best and go, okay, well, there's a spaceship, right? But this this spaceship has actually this starship has actually been designed uh, to work as as an entity. Um, and here's another example of the interaction. If I pinch the bottom toilet paper here, which is going to really screw up everybody's OCD, um, I'm going to put them, you know there's interactivity okay all that kind of good stuff um so all this sort of stuff is coming and um the idea behind the kickstarter is to push it to the next level right um so we're now in the central core of the ship now what i did want to show as we wander around here you can see that we've got um in fact, this is this has all gone shiny and bright since i was last year there's lovely reflections now as well um and so make believe beach reality so yeah so but this is this is make believe with a core of sort of scientific rigor about it and common sense and dare i say it design the starship you know is a is, is a is a make believe thing of course it is we all know that but it's within a constrained um boundary of possibilities right that yeah it's not it's it's not a starship that can do everything you have to make things happen you have to run it as a thing so it's you know, it's it's got limitations imposed by the way it works. So here we are at deck C, and so you know we're going to be able to do science on board the ship. So all those dreams you have of being a science officer on board a starship, um, you're going to be able to do that because there are science labs, and there will be control panels that actually do things. Okay, so this is an example of a distributor moving power around the ship, and um, inside these labs, which are obviously yet to be completed, there will be analysis devices and all sorts of interesting things like that and dan has just arrived in the chat excellent good to see you dan welcome to the chat we are talking about your amazing starship simulator so we are just taking a quick tour around the ship just to get our bearings once again um you know so here is you know here's uh in fact you are here that's a very helpful indicator <laughs> so anyway yeah give uh, actually at this point um give dan and claire because they're, they're both here give them a very warm welcome to the stream um and just say hello because um they are the geniuses behind this um this game and we want to we a want to showcase them um uh, a little bit more because they need as much kind of um, airtime as they can get right now because it's an important day coming up from there tomorrow and I, I completely get where they are because I've run my own Kickstarter as well and um, uh, it's, a, it's a pretty scary time it's exciting but it's a scary thing so we'll talk a little bit more about the future plans uh, in, in a bit um, so um, you know it's 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 a working starship and, and nothing really tells you that more than a quick visit down to um, the the lower deck. You can see I've run all the way round the perimeter of this this level. So let us let's take a wander right down to the base of the ship. Uh, these are habitation levels, so you can you can have a you know have your own um, uh, crew quarters, uh, which of which there are two levels there. So we're going down a little bit further, um, and this is the this is the first level of the engineering deck. And what you will be able to see, I'm not sure if I can get to it from this deck. Uh, we'll find out in a moment. But there are some interesting things. So, for example, here's, here's a, here is, as you can see, cryogenic storage. So the ship has a need for cooling and various other bits and pieces. So you can see that the ship has areas which require, you know, more um, industrial-type machinery. And there's, there's stuff sitting around here which needs you to 
do clever, complicated things, right? I'm not going to press any of these buttons because that would be highly dangerous and I'd probably explode something. Uh, <laughs> but do you see what you mean? You're going to need to learn how a star or how this starship actually works. And so there's going to be a need for uh, that doesn't look very healthy there, does it? Those those valves definitely probably, I think, should be plugged into something. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> fix that quick um push them push them says bigger no no i'm not touching any of these things because lots of flashing red lights will happen uh <laughs> accompanied by lots of alarmy sounds and then then the sparks will happen and you know what happens after that um but in here here we go um is so uh, that was the entrance so where do i get into the core here we go right so in the heart of the engine is a react in the heart of the ship is a reactor right and all of this needs um management and and smart people to look after it right? okay so and all the thinking behind the interior of the ship from the power systems to the distributor systems to uh, you know the, you know, the systems that provide cooling, the systems that provide batteries, the systems that provide auxiliary powers, and all those sorts of things that you would want to be mucking about with in a real starship. They exist in this game, right? They exist in this game, and they're thought through in a logical manner such that, um, you know, you can make compromises to the ship. So if part of the ship gets damaged um, and is failing, you can isolate it, you can cut it off, or you can route power through damaged systems around other ways throughout the ship in order to restore power to another part of the ship that currently doesn't have power. All of those things that you see in the shows, right? That you kind of like, wouldn't it be cool if we could do that in a game? This is it. This is the game, right? Uh, <laughs> smart people to look after it, says Bob. That's, that's most of us. Yeah, I know what you mean. Now, hello, there's a, there's, is that an NPC down there? Okay, so actually, so there are some NPCs doing things. Um, Lola Riley is doing some engineering stuff. So I'm, I'm, I'm just the captain, so I don't know that you can see another um, person over there. So there are NPC crew, for those of us who do want that single player experience, um, there are uh, NPC crew who are hopefully know what they're doing as well. Is there a Jenny? We need to ask, is there a Jenny? <laughs> It's a long stream tradition that we always have a crew member called Jenny on any of my starships. But uh, I wonder, actually, that's a question for Dan and Claire. Actually, can you can you customize the names of the crew just 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 because that's the thing uh, that we would we would like to do? Um, but here here in the center of the ship is um, you know is is the power source, which um, again is something that Dan has done some physics on. Okay, to generate an appropriate power source, and somewhere there's a, here we go. Here's the console, uh, which um, you know explains how the thing works, um, and yeah, we can. I mean, this is <laughs> insanely complicated. Just the first glance. Um, Okay, so Dan, Dan says, when the NPC crew are implemented properly, you will be able to fully customise the roster when you launch the mission. Okay, so we will be able to have a Jenny, everybody. That's going to be good. Uh, there has to be a Jenny. So, um, so yeah, but everything in the ship, you can see here, it's actually a deuterium helium-3 um, power reactor, which is supplying energy to the ship. Um, and it's it's in the core of the vessel, which is a sensible place to keep it as far away from anything that might possibly damage it. Uh, but, that you know, it... it and it's an insanely powerful thing, but it has limitations, and you're going to have to manage those limitations as you, as you fly the ship. Uh, terminate looks like a great button to press. It does, doesn't it? Reactor mode select, isolate or start up. Ter reaction control, terminate. Um, well, I, I, let's let's try it because we're here. Okay, so I'm just it's it's Blue Peter. Uh, let's terminate the reaction control and see what happens. So at the moment we've got some nice flashy lights, right? Um, uh, I'm going to press the terminate button and. Oh, I have literally <laughs> killed everything. Oh, there you go. I <laughs> switched the ship power supply off. <laughs> um, now, interesting enough, the, the crew haven't reacted to that. Now, can I? That has actually killed the entire UI of this panel as well. <laughs> uh, so I don't know how to switch it back on again now. <laughs> I was kind of hoping the UI would stay there, um, which doesn't, doesn't sound like a good thing. Um, Right, okay, so Dan, Dan's going to talk me through getting, getting the ship back online again. Uh, you need to leave the reactor room from the door behind you. Turn left. Right, hang on a minute. Uh, okay, turn left. 
Um, oh, the UI should have stayed there. Okay. And then go to the next room on the right to turn on the ship's startup capacitors. Okay, well, this is turning into a tutorial level now. Okay, so I'm going in here. Is this the right room? Okay, so, wow, well, okay, so. Uh, turn on the startup capacitor. Oh, there we go, look. Startup capacitors, right, so. Uh, turn on the top middle one. Which is the top middle one this one connect try that one reactor supply that's so switching and oh, we've got a green light that sounds good right <laughs> do you see what i mean about the interactivity okay i mean you would not leave incompetent captains in charge of the engines or the, or the main reactor but what i'm hoping that's done is it has reinstated the ui which is great right okay so the reaction control system is now showing everything is offline this is why you always have Scottish engineers on board. Aye, laddie. Um, uh, right, so the reactor is not reacting. So I'm guessing we just... Shall we try pressing initiate? No. That isn't working. Uh, so presumably I have to... Right, you need to switch it up to startup mode. Ah, okay, over there, right. So let's, let's go up to there. Startup mode. Now it's saying insufficient vacuum. I, th I think, uh, serious I am, I think if you are able to drop the FFV value a bit, you might be able to see the writing a bit better. That's a good point, actually. Let me see if I can just tweak that for you. Graphics display, field of view. Let's bring that down to a little bit. There we go. Okay, so return to game. Okay, so. It's saying insufficient vacuum, so presumably I start the vacuum pump. Okay, that's saying online. Now look, some stuff is happening over here. The temperature is stable. Now wait for the pressure to drop. Okay. <laughs> Insufficient vacuum, we're in space, just open the window. Yeah, it's probably not a good idea with us actually in the engine room, is it? Um, <laughs> to quote Alan Rickman, way to go, Jason, you broke the, you broke the bloody ship. Uh, yeah, I did, I did. This is, this is a good thing, so don't jab buttons when you don't know what they do. See, I should have listened to my own advice. Uh, <laughs> oh, so now field calls are offline, that kind of makes sense. So I'm, 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 okay, so field calls are now online. Now we have the initiate button. Here we go, are we going to switch the engines back on? Yes. Technical skills. Thank you very much, Dan, for telling me what to do. Don't go pressing random buttons on the Starship. There should be protocols about that. Okay. Um, so there we go. So, <laughs> so Big Boo takes the blame. But yes, I was, I was, I was um, definitely um, persuaded to jab random buttons on this way. But do you see what I mean? Okay. So in the context of a multiplayer game or even a single player game, if you like that depth of immersion, then uh, it's all here for you. It's all here for you, um, and that's that's going to be a that's that's going to be a thing. So let's um, having given you a kind of an orientation of the ship itself. Um, let us. And, you know, every room has got its own stuff in it. So there's more of those tanks in there. Um, uh, you know, kind of etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. It, it's all very 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 good. Um, can we lock the captains out of the controls? <laughs> That's probably a very good idea. Uh, just FYI, you are not supplying power to the batteries yet, so you're on a ticking clock before the... Okay. <laughs> How do I fix that then, Dan? Uh, that's probably a good thing for me to fix. I need to get back into the engine room. So the reactor's back on. Was it, is it this control panel? Supply, uh, yeah, this is a great simulation of what the poor crew of a starship, yeah, switch the reactor to supply mode, right, okay. Right, okay, so it's literally just, right, so now it's, now it's, the screens will then come on at the back of the reactor room. Brilliant, right, okay, so <laughs> we've now got the reactor supplying energy. Oh, that looks, it looks like uh, Salafrost from engineering has taken over the controls, which is probably, <laughs> probably very sensible. Right, in that case, let's get to the bridge, because, um, one of the things that we want to 
highlight is that this is a working starship. We, we've kind of explored the interior a little bit just to give you an orientation of the kind of scope of the game. And I'm already lost a bit. Where do I... I feel like I'm just trying to remember. Do I have to go up? Yeah, I've got to go up inside the reactor room, haven't I, to get to the next level. Yeah. So I've just literally walked in a circle. I've got to go up here. So you need to learn the layout of the ship. It's not super huge, but it's big enough to be a little bit disorientating until you get used to it. There we go. Sally Frost is going to lodge a formal complaint about his captain meddling with his starship. Uh, here we go. So I'm on F deck. I, th this is the way I know. So let's go back up the stairs. Um, so the game, as you can see, this is this is the Steam um, demo, which you can get. Obviously, you can get on Steam itself. So if you are on Steam and you'd like to try it out, that is a possibility. Now I know that um, the the big news really for for Starship Simulator is that they are going to be launching a Kickstarter. And I think I'm right in saying it's either two o'clock or four o'clock tomorrow afternoon is that right dan claire um it, it is absolutely imminent so um that's that's the thing it's going to be 2 p.m gmt utc tomorrow okay so literally tomorrow everybody now um i suppose i, I had a quick look at the kickstarter page and obviously at the moment it's in it's in pre-release mode uh which means i can't tell you a great deal about it so i dan and claire obviously uh, we have to respect the, the fact that you've got all sorts of surprises in the Kickstarter and stuff ready to go. But can you, can you give us a... Well, first off, what are you aiming to... What's the Kickstarter aiming to achieve? Because clearly there's a basis to the game here, um, which you, know, you want to do more development on. Um, but so, so what is the Kickstarter aiming... What, what, what's your aim with the Kickstarter? You know, it, it sounds to me like you want to take it to the next level. So what is that? What does it look like? If you want to just dump some stuff in the chat... I'll, I'll read it out for you and embellish it a bit um, so that uh, you know, the, the, the people watching tonight can, uh, can get an idea on it. And also, um, obviously, yeah, we'll upload this to YouTube afterwards to give you a little bit of coverage on that as well. So um, just, just tell us a bit, what, what are the aims of the Kickstarter while I go and reorientate myself with the, the way the ship's bridge works? Look in the closet on the right, says Glenn. Was there a closet? Okay, so Dan, Dan says, um, I'm a generalist, he says. Um, I can do a bit of everything, but we want to bring on more developers to focus on specific areas of the game um, and make them better than I can do on my own, basically, and also to get more done more quickly. Okay, so, I mean, what you've created so far is, and I, I, you know, superlatives aside, I think it's astonishing. You know, this is a beautifully rendered... Uh, well designed well thought through starship which kind of works um it you know the detail is brilliant you know it, there's nothing about it that screams oh that that's a placeholder other than you know there's empty rooms in some places um but um you know it's it's it, it it works you know absolutely beautifully and i think obviously building it on on unreal engine um you know gives you a common ground which is going to be which, which is going to be good. So, you know, the aim is to do more. Now, what you've got at the moment is a working starship that does actually move around. Okay, this isn't just an interior that is static. This this ship actually works. Um, so, um, yeah, that, that's that's an amazing thing. I think it's so. Here we are on the bridge, and we can see the Earth out of the window, um, and we can see. Obviously, this is a kind of I suppose hologrammatically projected display. For, for the purposes of navigation, we can see we're in the solar system. We can see different things within the solar system, which is which is jolly nice. There are different consoles for different tasks. We can see a console here, which is um, science and sensors, uh, which gives us various other bits and pieces to do. Um, we can see this one is a work in progress. I like the way you've put little sticky notes on it now. That's, that's a great idea. Uh, <laughs> I really like that. Then we've got the sort of navigation chair, uh, and the and the fast and light system, with helm controls and navigation autopilot. Um, over here, I believe, are still work in progress consoles um, with some with with the bridge shield, which I assume is is that a heat shield or a visual shield that's in there at the moment. Uh, we'll find out about that. In a minute. The captain's chair as well. Now the captain's chair does have some amazing uh, little useful things. 
which are uh, disco mode, which I particularly like. Uh, <laughs> absolutely essential on board a starship. Um, oh, condition normal, there we go. So we'll switch that back off. And in the middle here, which I think is a wonderful piece of design, is there's a hologrammatic representation of where the ship is and what, how it's oriented in space. So this is our galaxy, right? Um, with the spiral arms and the bar structure in the middle and everything else that you'd expect to see. Um, we are here, okay? This is where we are. We can sort of stand in the midst of this um, hologrammatic reputation to get a feel for where the ship is and what it's doing. Um, okay, so uh, Command 118 says the shield work on it is ablative plating, okay? Um, and um, yeah, we can we can navigate around using it. Now the the sensors here do have different modes. So if I just sit on this chair here, we can um, switch from galactic position, which is I believe the mode we're in at the moment, to stellar position. And then notice that the hologram scenario in the middle of the bridge changes to our kind of immediate local group of stars. So here we are in the solar system, and you can see the orientation of the ship there. Uh, we can see nearby stars in this hologrammatic representation. So we have Wolf 359, which will be familiar to some of you, Sirius, um, Alpha Centauri, uh, and uh, Land 211853, which is all correct. Okay, these are literally the stars in the actual real astronomical neighborhood. So these are, yeah, in effect, real places. Uh, that we could, you know, we could, we can go and visit, and we have uh, over here on this station again, we have the ability to say, okay, well, we're currently looking at probably ten light years radius, I would guess. Um, there we are. We're seeing the, the the various different systems that are in. For some <laughs> for some bizarre reason, my PC decided it was going to be. A, it was a really good idea at that point to fire up Stellarium. <laughs> Didn't last for, but there we go. Uh, <laughs> um, okay, so um, so just catching up with chat again. For for when you are put into the vortex, you're given a, a moment of oh yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Big Boo. Um, so Glenn says, is the galaxy map going to have something like the fog of war? Only reveal things you've already discovered. Okay, so um, so the captain will have controls to mirror any of the bridge station onto the hologram display, and also be able to press objects on the display to target things. Okay, so that's. Nice little things. I can see something moving up there. Is that new? Is that an antenna or something? We'll have a look at those as well. Um, so if I change the 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 modes here, you can see up, that's a 20 light year radius. Let's go and have a quick look at that because this is stars that we'll all be, again, familiar with. Lots of um, Hipparchus catalogue stars, which is what the HIP means. But if we... Were, and I love the way we can wander into the middle of the hologrammatic display. We can see our local environment here we can see we should be able to see um you know there's, there's 8760 there um there's, there's all sorts of interesting places here and they're all orientated so we can kind of see them um you know it's an insane level of detail that allows us to to see what's going on um uh, there's lakai there 9352 a star system very close to my uh, my um my heart. As somebody, somebody will know. Van Manen star. Um, all stars that we can see from Earth. And if we scroll out to a 50 light year range, um, there we go. We can see. Okay, it's not giving us the names now because it would be a bit overwhelming. But we can see the environment around us. Um, oh, that's why you're familiar. You're the book guy, says Dave Soft. <laughs> it's a high poly dish. Oh, that's the GPS. Okay, so that's the. Uh, Galactic positioning sensor, I assume, or, or something uh, on that sort of thing. So, so yeah. So, and then we have the um, that was so that star system mode. Oh, let Let's try that again. I seem to be my mouse is jumping off the screen. Unfortunately, for some ah, hang on. Let me. Oh, I can see what's gone wrong here. For some reason, my screen has overlapped with my icons at the bottom, which is freaking it out so here we are in star system mode we can see the orientation of the ship relative to the local star system so we can say okay well there's jupiter there's saturn Uranus, neptune pluto is uh, is mapped there all with, with you know correct orbital kind of parameters 
uh, and we are obviously around Earth at the moment. So it, it, you know, if we, the first thing we need to do is select a target. Now this is this is very elegantly done. So this is how this is how the multiplayer allows you to work. So let me just sit in the seat again. So if we want to choose, let's say somewhere nice and pretty, let's go to Saturn. Okay, if I click on Saturn, I get target information about Saturn, right? Um, and um, you know, it, it tells me things about. But I can then send that to the helm, which I've now done. Okay, so my helmsman is now able to pick that up. Okay, so there's a question there about. Um, uh, where do you get the abstract places? Where do you get the source data to make an accurate 1.1 uh, galaxy model? So Dan has responded with, uh, right now we're using the Hipparchus for the real data, uh, but we will be switching to the Gaia data at some point. Everything outside of real data is procedurally generated using real astrophysics. So whatever's out there is is mapped to the, you know, a great interpretation of what is possible to be out there, if that makes sense. So well, now, now we're at the helm, we have... Uh, the option to use the sensor target. Okay, so that is, um, at the moment, that says distance 12 AU. So did I did I do that wrong? I'm just wondering if I did that wrong. Let me try that again. I thought that's how it worked. So I'd like to go to Saturn, just because Saturn is cool. So Saturn, send to hell. Maybe it didn't, I didn't need to do anything. Uh, I thought it was use sensor target. Maybe I'm doing something wrong, Dan. <laughs> what I thought was supposed to happen there is it was okay. Hang on, the ship's coordinates are so that's I've just cleared the target. Let's try that again. Oh, and the ship suddenly. Why is the ship moving? Okay, I think I better get into control here. Let's try that again. Send to hell. Saturn. Send to hell. Oh, it's just showing the target as being less than. Okay, so all right then. So let's use the sensor target. Right. Okay. So um, well, I'm going to engage the. Okay. So there it's saying target type class one gas giant. Let's just engage the autopilot. All right. So the autopilot is going to take us around. Then we need to engage the FTL, I think. Here we go. And I think at the moment it does fly us through the Earth, which is clearly something we need to work on. <laughs> um, and the field power, there we go, right. And we are now traveling. Now, again, beautiful here. I can get up from my tubes. I can still wander around the ship whilst the ship is doing stuff. And as you can see, it's locked onto Saturn. Um, there goes Ceres. So this is just a little jaunt across the solar system. Uh, you'll have to fly through the Earth to uh, suspend disbelief. Yeah, okay. So uh, stuff stuff that will be worked on, sort of more navigation things. Um, uh, but okay, and it's giving us an AU. Thank goodness there's an AUs. I, I can understand AUs. Um, much more happy with AUs as a distance of measurement than other systems of measurement we could we could we could mention. So that's that's good. So we're, you know we're just wandering over to Saturn here. And in a moment, Saturn will appear in front of us as, as a real thing. So you can see the FTL um, effect that's being used here, just sort of sweeping us through space. What I particularly like about this is, and we'll see it in a moment, is uh, when we go on a, a, a bit more of a jaunt, is that um, it's not a jump. It's not a hyperspace jump between destinations. It's... It's a fluid motion through space. So you actually get to enjoy the sensation of travel, right? Um, okay, so I've got the reactor set to 10%, so the ship is traveling very, very slowly. Okay, so actually, we will speed that up for the future. Um, as you can see, Saturn is coming in at, at a gentle, at a little base. We will we'll fix that up. Um, so, um, so, yeah, so... Um, from what I remember, um, Commander M, last time, that the moons haven't yet been implemented in the in the game, but the planets are there. Um, 
Okay, so the FTL speed is directly driven by the reactor output at the moment. Okay, so we will we'll have a tweak on that. So here comes Saturn. We are coming into. Let's hope the autopilot works. Moons moons will be installed on Tuesday. <laughs> um, so you can see we are now approaching. Saturn. In fact, we're kind of approaching. Now it's. I think what you've done is you've taken for for, for known planets like this. You've taken. I don't know why I'm walking around the side window there to get a better view, as if as if I'd be able to see more. <laughs> um, but. Um, You've taken actual imagery from NASA to use for the planets. So planets in our solar system look pretty much as they as they should, right? Um, and we've got the ability to. Um, so I'm hoping the ship is going to stop us at the right view. So the external view is only from the helm. Okay, so they're all 8K NASA images for solar planets. Okay, so some some really nice detail. I'm hoping that the autopilot is going to stop us. Is it? It says it's engaged, so um, there we go. We are fuel power is still okay. Now we are slowing down. It's just that last little bit's taking a while. It's even got the polar hexagon. So yeah, so this is real NASA imagery that's been used here. Now the thing I particularly like, if I can switch off the engines for a moment. Um, I've got I've got control here of pitch and things, but I can do that externally from what I remember. Um, so if I press just press disengage, that will hold us in position. There we go. Um, so let's disengage the FTL. Now, um, if I press, those are the key. That's the, the key back. Now there is a way for me to jump into the camera mode. So this is this is external cam from me, the individual. There we go. Now we've got the external camera for the ship so we can get the kind of classic eye candy shots of the ship um, in space and you can see there you can see if we zoom in a little bit you can see the the kind of recreation deck at the back there which is just a lovely thing now I think I'm right in saying that if I pan the ship orbit the ship around a little bit here so that the rear of the ship is facing Saturn let's just and then we can we can also pitch it a little bit. So let's do it like that. So we get the, the ultimate possible view of the rings like that. And then I can sort of, there we go. OK, I'm just going to park the ship about there. OK, now this is this is the thing that I loved about this. Is it, Let's get up out of our seat. So out of the field of vision, we know, you know we're just looking at space again. Let's go to the back of the ship. And you can see, look, through the bridge windows at the back of this, you can see the gloriness of Saturn kind of hanging there in the sky through the top windows. But when we go to the back of the ship now on the recreation deck, this is the bit that really kind of blows me away, is we can wander down the stairs here, past the piano, obviously, um, and there, out of the windows, is this glorious view of Saturn. I mean, we're there. I mean, how, how does it... It doesn't get any better than that, right? It's just... It's, <laughs> It's just gloriously beautiful. And we can, you know, so somebody can be flying the ship and you can be just down here enjoying the view if you wish to. Um, and so the glories of the universe are going to be the eye candy from the windows of the ship. And you know, obviously you can get the external cameras as well. So it's, it's going to be <laughs> going to be insane. Um, uh, so, you know, there's, there's, there's stuff to do. Now, um, Dan, um, there are going to be... Um, you know, at, at the moment, um, you know, as I understand, the plan is to have encounters with alien life forms and things like that in, in the future. So, um, yeah, we will meet and interact with other uh, other life forms out there. Um, uh, there's a plan to add shuttles in for kind of away mission stuff um, and, you know, other locations. And, you know, so there's all sorts of exciting stuff going on. Um, you know, it's just... The, the the idea and, and again remember we're pl i'm playing this at the moment just in single user mode um so we will be able to collaborate as a crew in multiplayer to to do all this sort of stuff now i i happen to know that dan very dan and claire very kindly when i streamed this last year um um we, we had a we had a good chat about science fiction in general now some of you will know i've written some um books um and they are set in um a fictional um, 
well, a, a real star system, but in a fictional environment called, uh, and, the, and the system is called Lakai 9352, which is in the game here. So I'm just going to um, go there. And you can see uh, what, what's interesting here is these, these names are the names that I gave to my fictional star system in the Lakai 9352 system. And Dan, Dan and Claire very, very kindly um, put those names into this game. So it, it's... <laughs> I'm not worthy. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, so we can go and visit uh, the, one of the planets in my um, in my books, if you like, which is which is which is just an amazing thing to have had uh, happen. So um, to demonstrate the uh, first little jaunt across space, I'm going to go there again just because I can, and it's my stream. <laughs> so um, so yeah, so we can get to go and see Azurio in for real life. For those of you who have read. Um, my books you'll know what it's what's actually going on there but um let's let's actually go there and show you how the interstellar flight works uh, between between systems so we're going to um i think go to max power this time uh we're going to use the sensor target uh showing 10.2 light years away which which is about right um and i think we're going to engage the autopilot again and it will as you can see steer the ship around Hopefully it's pointing in the correct location. There it is. So we've got the zero as a navigation target. I'm going to engage at the moment saying ETA 999 plus years because we're not actually moving. Uh, don't forget to turn the reactor up to 100%. So I've set the field power to 100%. Is that is that correct? Um, it's going to take a while. So let's engage the FTL and see how long it takes to get there. OK, so we're, we're moving. Um, There we are. We're down to we're down to two hundred years. Uh, there we are. Now look at the speed here. So I don't know if you can see that too well on the screen. Actual speed in in C now. So we are now at hundred times the speed of light. Two hundred, five hundred thousand. So it yeah, this this ship moves right. <laughs> we're now leaving the Earth solar system behind. But check this out. As we as we fly through space, you will notice that the immediately close stars. Can you see the parallax there? Is they're moving, right? So it's not like a hyperspace jump, right? It, the star background is moving in real time as you're traveling through space. You can see the light year count is dropping as we move. Uh, are we there yet? Uh, I'll need to set it on the reactor controls, okay? But you can set the ship going and then run down the reactor. Okay, so it's gonna take a little while if I don't boost the reactor, okay? so. <laughs> Let's just while we're here, we we've got time. So let's just go external here because I just this this is an important thing about this. So we are now traveling through interstellar space. We can see we've left the sun behind us, and we're now and Wolf three five nine there, as you can see, is just slowly creeping away from us. So the the stellar environment changes as we're flying through it, which I don't think any other space game like this has done. So this is a one-to-one -one realistic representation of a galaxy that you actually fly through in sort of pseudo real time not it, you don't just jump to locations and then it just regenerates itself you can see it flowing past the windows which is just that's just mind-bogglingly good right we're going to have to sneak down to the reactor room and up the power um so we will do that yeah we won't go to wolf 359 bad 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 things have legendarily happened there so i've got to sneak down to the reactor should be able to get one of the NPCs to do it for me, really, shouldn't I? But anyway, there we go. So, so yeah. So Dan, how long have you how long have you been working on this as a as a project? Because it it, it looks, you know, it looks and feels pretty solid already as a, an environment. You know, it's it, things work, and you can, I mean you can tell it's not complete clearly, but you know it's it's got a lot of um, stuff that clearly has already been done and and thinking. Um, so how, how long have you been working on this? Dan says he's been working on this about three years. Okay, so we started working properly in January 2001. So, uh, tw 2001, <laughs> Space Odyssey, no, 2021. Uh, right, so let's get down here and up the thing. So, I mean, it's an amazing amount of stuff to have generated in that time. So is this the right console for the reactor power? Don't see a reactor. Um, so it's almost three years. So you've done an amazing amount. Oh, here we are. That says ten percent. So do I? 
I've lost my... Oh, no, I don't want to terminate it. No, that's not what I want to do. I've lost my I've lost my little dot in the middle of the screen. Am I supposed to have a dot? I've lost for some reason my UI is not showing the dot. I don't know. I'll press H for the HUD. Ah, there we go. Right, sorry. Good. Right, so plus plus. Okay, so let's whack the power up to hundred percent. Right. Oh no, not hundred <laughs> Ah I'm gonna blow something up. Uh hundred percent. Never go to it more than hundred percent is is <laughs> That's always a good suggestion. <laughs> okay, so three years you got to this stage, and now correct me if I'm wrong. And you know, if there are any inaccuracies, they're entirely mine. But um, as I understand it, um, the the base game of this you are planning to give away for free. Is that is that right? Um, so you know, everything we're seeing here, we're we're going to be able to just go and play. Everyone's doing that. Yeah, the airship is about to go boom. Um, I'm just going to keep walking up. So, so tell us a bit more about how you how you plan. I mean, I mean, lovely that you would give it to us for free, right? But how how are you going to make some money? Because that's important too. Because you know, you and Claire presumably want to eat and have somewhere to live, and you know, important things like that, which I know are secondary considerations to the the community of game players, but uh, you know. <laughs> It is important. Uh, I think that you guys have some money too. That would that that would seem to be important to me. Um, so Dan says that's right. Okay, assuming we hit the funding targets to cover the baseline features, we will release for free. And if we don't hit the funding targets, we'll have to pivot to a, a box price. Okay, so the intention is for the base game to be free. And what supported by add-ons or mission packs or extra ships? What what what? what how are you going to? How are you going to fund yourselves, as it were? Uh, OK, so it's going to be supported by downloadable content, ships and story campaigns. OK, fantastic. So um, uh, and I saw, you know, gratifying, I think, for, for many players on your website that um, you know, you're not going to be doing, um, you know, microtransactions and any of that cobblers inside the game. You know, what you see is effectively what you get, a working starship. Um, uh, fantastic. He's actually mentioned that in the chat. I was just going to, I was just going to go there. I knew that was coming up. Um, so, okay. So no, no micro transactions. Okay. What you see is what you get. You're going to have a working staff. And if you want cool extra content for your game. So once you've exhausted, you know, the possibilities of just tooling around the universe, doing your own thing, you can add story content in as a, as a downloadable content. So, um, I, th I think I'm right in saying is build the community of players around the game to start with and get, get the basics right. And then you, basically add on top of that the content which keeps it sort of ever fresh is is, is that is that fair um so you know it's it's that, that 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 i think is a really nice way of doing it and, and all power to you for taking that um uh, that approach so here we are on um, <laughs> here we are this is this is what i loved about this i mean i was totally blown away from this and thank you so much for doing this is this is a fictional planet inside a computer simulation which we have just literally traveled to with a you know, with an ftl powered starship um to visit a planet that i dreamed up in a book i mean nothing screams uh, space game community more than that right uh so you know this this <laughs> this just blows my mind that we could do this all the time nowadays um um, so that's amazing. So you can look at the galaxy and play with the ship all for free and then pay, um, pay from there. That is unique. Also. I mean, it's, it's, it's a lovely idea and, you know, all power to you for, so the model is build the community for free, remove all the barriers to entry and then support the game through, um, downloadable content. So, you know, what a fantastic approach. And I, I, th I think, it, I, I just think it really needs, uh, as much support as we, uh, and, and when I say we, I mean, I'm not speaking on behalf of the entire space game community on the entire internet. That would be, that would be, <laughs> that would be a monumental sense of self-importance of which I, I have been accused of in the past. Um, but, um, you know, uh, you know, trumpet these things, my friends, Yeah, for, for the, the social media presences that you all have online and the forums you frequent and all that kind of good stuff. Getting the word out about this game, the ability for this game to have a 1.1 scale model of the galaxy, which you can travel around in in a spaceship and just watch going past the windows and go and explore stuff and interact with stuff and have adventures in with multiplayer as well. All of these things, right? Um, 
from a from a small team of incredibly dedicated people who are just trying to make an awesome 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 game and and i've read some of dan's stuff online and, and the motivation for this project is literally um make something awesome because it's it's a cool thing to do you know that is literally the motivation for this game is is um everybody involved wants to fly a warp powered starship around <laughs> around the galaxy and do stuff right and so boom you know it's, it's a labor literally a labor of love that's what this game is and um you know i would love to see it go from strength to strength to strength so all power to you um Dan and Claire, as to, you know, for, you know, A, for how far you've got so far, and B, for the potential this thing has um, to just be insane, insanely awesome. Um, so Claire says, uh, we're both gamers and have been forever. Dan wants to play this game, so we'll let you all play too. So Dan's sort of building it for himself, really, and, and, and for Claire. And then we get, to, we get to tag along, which I think is just awesome. Um, it's an it's, 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 it's amazing thing. So, you know, here we are... Uh, in space near to um, a planet that I sort of dreamed up, which, you know, is, is an Earth-like world um, in orbit around a, a red dwarf star, which we can see over there, and, and, and there are other bits and pieces as well. Um, now, some of you will have spotted there is a nebula down in the bottom corner of the screen. It's a little bit, it's a little bit faint on my display, but um, um, in the game... Um, you know there there will be nebulas and there will be black holes and you know and stuff like that to um explore as well so there are hazards in space and uh you know weird and wonderful you know natural astronomical phenomena and all those kind of things um is 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 going uh, it, yeah it's going to be a thing um so you know so yeah <laughs> So, Orkney Sean says, um, Dan, what uh, what are the levels of Kickstarter support are they going to be? So, uh, Dan has answered that, but they're going to be you can you can jump in at five quid, and you'll be up to five thousand um, uh, pounds, and it sort of starts with uh, that's four K wallpapers up to work with me to design your own starship. So, if you're if you're particularly financially uh, you have a degree of financial latitude, here is your chance to have a you know have a working starship. Um, is there coffee in that nebula? That's a very good question. I think <laughs> ought to go and find out. Um, so, um, uh, a starship optional interior aesthetics can be something that also generates. So, there's lot there's lots of possible things in there uh, that I, I think you can you can you can carefully look at to 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 add, to add funding as well. Um, Dan says I'll actually be making a zero manually at some point to match the book description as exactly as possible, and that's just going to be the insane thing. And I say, Dan, I know um, we had a brief chat. Uh, uh, well, Dan and Claire, we had a brief chat about you know the downloadable content as well into the restory content. Um, you know. If if you would like me to you know to, to contribute some material to that at some point in the future, um, just 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 yeah, you've got my contact details. Just hit me up because I would love to be involved in a project like that, um, and um, you know contributing some sort of narrative or content into the game for you um, would would be an absolute pleasure. So just just let me know. Um, I would love to be involved, and uh, um, I'm I'm in the middle of a house move at the moment, <laughs> as some of you may have seen on the, on social media, but. Um, um, I, I, yeah, at some point in the future, I will have some time. So, uh, uh, yeah, that would be a good start. And yeah, it, you know, I mean, you know, a book tie-in. You know, we, we, all these things are possible, right? So, um, you know, there, there's there's lots to do and lots of things that we can talk about in terms of promoting things. So, um, I, I would love to love to support you yeah, as, as as much as you feel you need. So, um, you know, just just let me know uh, what uh, <laughs> what I can do for you. Um, so uh, Dan says, we have every intention of contacting you at some point with a view to giving you a culture and or cultures to own within the game. Well, I mean, that would just be insanely amazing. So um, I shall look forward to that uh, with, with, with bated breath. Uh, as, as, as some kind of future downloadable content for, for this game because I mean this 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 is to me is the perfect game it's it's space exploration but in the real the real universe uh, uh, of doing sorts of stuff so that, you know there's there's huge amounts we can do with that and I would I would love to be involved so um, Dan Dan and Claire suggestions then um, in terms of eye candy places that we could get to within the confines of the stream because I know um, we have a warp powered starship here but we are constricted you know, within the bounds of possibility a little bit. I don't know if that nebula would be reachable in the time that we actually have uh, in the game. So uh, <laughs> yeah, let's just, uh, let's just yaw the ship to the right a little bit while we're looking up. Where is that nebula, is it? 
was it down a bit? I think it was down and to the... Let's pitch down. The ship is actually quite manoeuvrable. Uh, so there, there is the nebula straight ahead. Um, so I'm actually flying the ship manually now. Um, I don't know... Okay, so the nebula is about 20 minutes away on full, but well, let's let's go to the nebula because that that also gives you an idea. And you know, this is a little bit of okay. So we can use the autopilot to travel between stars, right? But if you literally just want to go somewhere in the universe, you can literally do that thing. You can say, okay, second star to the left and straight on till morning, or in this case, 20 minutes. So let's just engage the FTL and let's just pick a direction, which just happens to be where that. Um, um, nebula is and then we're just going to hit max here we go full power and then watch as we say a fond farewell to Azurio as it literally just disappears past boom it's just a glorious glorious thing pick a point of light and and go there I mean that's that's just insanely good so I'm just going to pitch the ship up a little bit and so you know that then the nebula there is just in front of us. We are now traveling at maximum speed for the ship. So the target speed is okay, two million times the two million times the speed of light is the or two point five million times the speed of light is the speed we have achieved. Let's just pop out onto the external view again. There we go. So now you can see look, there's the stars. You know, HIP four three nine is literally slowly moving past the display because we are traveling at that speed. So okay, so 2.5 million C is 300 light years per hour. So that's that's the top speed that Dan and Claire have set for the game to sort of feel like yeah. You know, you, there's there's some distance of. I love the fact we can we can literally see the stars parallaxing past the display here. You know, there's and there's another star just coming into range. It's just yeah, <laughs> switch their reactor to 100 percent. I'm not I'm not going to do that. Um, I just think this this gives you so much more of a respect for the the size of the galaxies you know um i suppose the question actually um dan how how long would it take to traverse the galaxy because the galaxy is what how wide is the galaxy i'm just trying to remember now um is it is it ten thousand light years or was it forty thousand light years? How, how what's the diameter of the galaxy somebody should know i should know that is it is it a hundred thousand light years across okay um Big boost, as I'm guessing. Okay, Glenn says 100,000 light years. So, uh, at 300 light years per hour, I still, uh, you know, so that's that's 300, 300 hours, something like that. Okay, so, sorry, I've done my maths badly. Dan, from edge to edge light years. Okay, so, uh, oh no, it's about 300. Okay, so 333 hours to traverse the galaxy from one side to the other. Does does the ship have fuel to do that, or are you going? To, is that going to be a trip that you couldn't do? Okay, so it's about fourteen days non-stop flight to get from one side of the galaxy to the other. Um, but obviously, you're going to want to stop along the way and look at things. Um, okay, so fourteen days. So does will the ship have? Presumably, will will the ship have fuel? Okay, yeah. So a fortnight. <laughs> will the ship have fuel to do that in one hit, or would you have to stop and? do some stuff to 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 refuel okay so the ship will require the skimming of gas giant atmospheres to refuel every 100 light years or so okay so there's only a certain amount of fuel so presumably the energy requirements here i mean we're traveling at two and a half million times the speed of light that's got to be sucking up a fair amount of juice one would have thought um um yeah um certainly the position of the starship is search is is saved again if you look at the console here you can see um our position in terms of ship coordinates notice they're changing here so I don't know if I can zoom in a little bit here. Um, I can't at the moment. Um, but you can see um, the galactic X, Y, and Z coordinates in terms of sectors uh, and also kilometers within that sector. I think that's right. Um, a rake right click. Ah, there we go. So there you can see um, our position in terms of light years so it is like um uh x y and z in terms of light years relative to i think is is the galactic core zero 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 um um 
I'm not sure if it is, but and then you've got like a local x y in terms of kilometers relative to the, presumably the center of that light year sphere. So um, it's something like that. Um, um, I believe there are plans for um, VR. Uh, it's not not um, not yet, but it's built. Okay, I'll get Dan's answer. It's been built with VR in mind. We just haven't implemented the locomotion aspect yet. Okay. Um, so it, so it is coming. So that that's you know there's another thing you can explore the you know, interior of the ship in VR and operate these controls. In, I mean, it's, that's going to be mind blowing. Uh, do the gas giants have a Costa or Burger King whilst traveling <laughs> the ship? <laughs> okay, so um, Dan says uh, Sag A star, which obviously is the supermassive black hole that's in the galaxy, uh, is it fifty 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 because that's the middle of the central sector of the galaxy, right? Okay, so that gives us a, a sense of of, of where that is okay um so we are literally traveling forward towards this this nebula just to get a sense of the travel through space so you can see a uh, whilst 14 days doesn't sound like a lot i mean there's i don't know how many stars you're simulating because the, the number of stars in the galaxy is a bit of a debate i mean some people have it as low as 100 billion and some people have it as high as 500 billion we're not <laughs> don't seem to be entirely sure how many stars we're dealing with but there's a lot of stars um, out there, um, I suppose another question for the for the explorer types who like to put their names on things, Dan, is that you know if we um, f if we're the first person to travel to I don't know you know a procedurally generated planet twenty thousand light years from our current position, do we get the option to sort of put our name on it as a as you know the first starship ever to reach this far? Uh, you know, is there is there ability to influence the game in 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 that fashion? Are those sort of things coming? Um, yeah, the, the, the plant a flag thing, that's it. You know, I, I was here. Uh, <laughs> okay, so it's, it's not an MMO. So um, it would be nice if we can dim the bridge lights. I got a feeling we can. Is there a, a bridge light? There's bridge doors. There was, there was a lighting circuit. Wasn't there? One of things that's window control. It does say working progress. Maybe there's a bit. I know the captain's chair can switch into disco mode, but I don't know if there's an ability to dim the lights. Um, and, and there is an observation room at the front. Okay, so Dan says at some point we'll have an account system on the website, and if you log into your account while playing it, it will sort of tracking the sort of thing. Um, displaying of player data will be an optional thing. So that that's a good point. So it's not an MMO, but um, so is is everybody's universe. Um, tied to the player who kind of initiated the game because I notice um, when we start the game we have the option of, of just playing it effectively in single player as I am at the moment but we also have the option of multiplayer but is it gives me the option to host a game so is that is that effectively my game and I'm inviting people into my 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 space and we go wherever my save game is um, so there's not a there's not a concept of it being a shared universe with other ships, if that makes sense. There's, yeah, it's sort of a single player with multiplayer cooperative gameplay in it. I'm I'm, I'm probably not defining that very well, um, but maybe just explain the you know uh, what the, the what what the wider context is. Okay, so um, Dan says we are all playing in the same shared galaxy because all seeds are driven by the coordinates of the stars themselves. Okay, so and you invite folks to your crew. Okay. Um, so this might sound like a dumb question, but um, is traveling meant to be done um, AFK? Yeah, uh, you know, away from keyboard. Um, so yeah, so the ship gets on and flies through space without the, without us needing to be involved. Now we've set the um, set the course. Um, And try and go to program. So, if you find a cool planet or alien species, that will be there in the same place for all players, so you can share the location with friends. Okay. Um, so, so the galaxy is the same for everybody, but we're kind of effectively exploring it as in, uh, uh, you know, as as a bunch of players, as as, as a group. Um, so, it, there, there's not going to be a concept of seeing another ship go past. That's another player ship, as it were, in a, in a shared galaxy at the same time. That that sort of makes sense for the scope of what you're creating. What you're creating here. Um, so it's this is this is my starship, and I'm inviting other players onto it. 
Okay, no, that's cool. That's cool. Uh, right, so that that um, nebula is slowly, slowly taking form in front of us. You can see some detail in there now. Um, so Claire's, Claire's added in there. So we, um, okay, so uh, Dave Soft is saying, uh, the plan is you can play as the ship's cook while the NPCs fly the mission. Okay, so <laughs> excellent. So the NPCs just go off, actually do the mission and you can be a, a lowly rank as well. Not that there's nothing in, yeah, not, the, uh, not the, the cook isn't important, but you know what I mean. Or you can fly the mission uh, or maybe we can do the science. So, you know, if you don't want to be, you know, the captain in charge of the ship, you can you can take other roles on the ship and do those jobs and the NPC crew will operate around you to do the best they can in the scenario. I think that's very, very cool because lots of us will probably want to be the captain, but some of us will just want to be the engineer or the science officer or, or the other roles on the ship. So I think that's, that's, that's an amazing piece of gameplay. Or like you say, you can, as multiplayers, we can, we can share that to, with them. Um, uh, the sort of stuff. So that, that's going to be good. Um, so uh, Andy P seven eight three says I can definitely attest to not putting one hundred and ten percent on the reactor as I've just broken my ship. Um, <laughs> don't do that. Do we? Lesson, lesson learned there. Um, okay, so I do have plans for players to be able to form a fleet using their own hosted MySQL database. Um, all players in that fleet will have things like their ship location visible to other players in that specific fleet, and it'll leave them out for text. Okay, so there's there's there's, there's, well, there's ways to expand it, which are, which that 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 sounds insanely exciting. Captain Pike would love this game uh, uh, simulator. Um, <laughs> Glenn wants to be a cook who's secretly a political spy. Okay, so I think I I hope for everybody who's watching this and everybody who will watch it on YouTube afterwards, I'm, we're getting the sort of scale of the ambition of what's on. You know, potentially on offer here. Um, am I seeing? I'm just looking at the edge of that as that planet, that that star moves across. Am I seeing a bit of chromatic aberration there, or is that just me making that up? It looks like it's got a leading red indicator. And in I don't know what I'm looking at there. Maybe it's just a it's an effect. I don't know if you're modelling any sort of red shifting effects or anything <laughs> weird and wonderful like that um oh if i haven't turned it off oh is it a setting in there okay so maybe that's what it is um so uh, are all ships going to be this large apparently there will no there is a plan to have smaller ships glenn with you know, little shuttles and and things like that that will will move around as well there is a shuttle bay at the back of the ship i understand um which is kind of yet to be built or at least it was yet to be built uh, back back um, when the last looked at this, um, but um, yeah, that is um, yeah. Th th there's going to be options for different sort of ships. Um, let's let's while we're still waiting, uh, while we're still travelling in space, let's just go back and explore the back of the ship again, because um, I love the fact that we can wander around the ship um, while stuff is happening. So yeah, we can literally sit over here and. Uh, well, at least we can't sit there at the moment, but we will be able to. Anyway, we can look out the windows as as we're travelling through space. I mean, <laughs> Glenn is going to attempt to um, land on Euro Europa just because. Uh, bad bad things will happen, Glenn. You know that. Um, okay, so um, Commander M wants to be a, a robotics scientist or a cargo buy cargo cargo guy. Um, Dan says the next ship we will build will be aimed at a small five-man crew, a much more intimate experience. Okay, so this is obviously a large ship. Um, question about DJ Screw: Where's the bar, my friend? You, your needs are your needs are sated. Uh, there is a bar, and it has both beer and wine. This is the first time I think we've ever seen wine in a space game. Um, yeah, and look at this; it's it's interactable. I can move it up, and we can we can have a drink, and we can have a space beer. And, and stuff so you know all all is good apart from that, i'll keep knocking over i haven't quite got the the mechanics of how i'm supposed to pick these sort of stuff so i mean yes there's a bar there's also a place to there's even a piano so we can um we can we can have you i mean there needs to be a space saxophone and maybe a few other instruments but we'll, yeah well let's not get ahead of ourselves shall we um so you know that there's, there's good stuff, and we are still, as you can see, still traveling through space, um, using the, using the FTL drive whilst we're wandering around the ship. 
Um, so, um, you know, that's going to be a good thing. Um, like you need to <laughs> drink in real life. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Some of you have met me at conventions, haven't you? Um, so um, I'm usually quite well behaved. But, um, yeah, so, you know, this this is a ship in which, you know, you can you can go to. The other thing I think is important here is if I, which I didn't show you, if you look at this, let's zoom this in a little bit so it's a bit faster while we're still traveling. You see that nebula is now growing on the screen, which is just lovely to watch. Let's switch this to 10 light years. Um, there we go. And you can see this holographic display that they've created in the middle here. As you can see, if I can get this a uh, nice angle, we can see there, look, it shows that we are moving through space, right? You can see the stars moving past the relative position of the ship on this hologrammatic scanner. And I think that's just, a, oh, that's just lovely because um, there's a G, so if you see anything on here as you're going through, look, there's a G-class star there, which uh, is presumably procedurally generated. So we could go, actually, let's stop here. Let's shut the engines down. Let's go and explore that G-class star. Uh, because if we go over to the scanner at this stage, um, we can we should be able to see. Um, there we are, seven targets in range. There's the G-class star. Um, it's not been scanned. Um, it's showing that there are some terrestrial planets in there. So we could just go and investigate, right? I mean, it's just like, ah! It's just like that's exactly what we want to do. Uh, you know, if you see something interesting as you're traveling through space, you just stop and go and take a look. So let's, let's see what's yeah. You know, let's literally let's see what's out there. So that's what's going to be exciting. So um, in the dev build, it also shows planets on the hollow screen. Okay, so that's quite good. Copage one says, "Is this currently being crowdfunded?" So, okay, so here's the big deal. Dan, feel free to dump the Kickstarter link into the chat. Um, so um, this game is going to be kickstarted. It's currently this sort of alpha level demo. Um, there's a Kickstarter literally about to start tomorrow afternoon, 2, 2 p.m. UK time, UTC, GMT, um, aiming to raise funds to take this game to the next level. And the plans are to get some more devs on board to basically generate more of what you've already seen and, um, um, and just take this game to the next level um, there we go look now what's beautiful about this so this nebula that you can see in front of us isn't just it's not just a bitmap right it's not just a bitmap this is a volumetric nebula so that little bit of dust occultation you can see up there and this little bit here that's actually a structure in space <laughs> so we can well we will uh, we're going to fly up into that area to check out that dusty part so let's pitch up oh there we go let's pitch up a little bit here we go and we're going to yaw to the left a little bit there we go and now we're targeting that little bit you can see there's an m-class star in that direction we're going to go past um, so let's again get back out of our chair and go so let's say oh, we're heading into the top quadrant of the nebula so um, you can use the keyboard shortcuts in first person that's true that's true um, uh, go for it. so yeah so that link takes you to the Kickstarter page now the Kickstarter isn't live right now the Kickstarter will go live at 2 p.m. tomorrow that is the 19th of March if you're watching this after the stream uh, 19th of March um, the Kickstarter will go live and it's seeking funding um, are you able to tell us what your Kickstarter target is, Dan, or is that top secret at the moment? Um, if it is, not not to worry. But if you know, um, you know, uh, yeah, there's going to be a significant amount of funding. The idea being basically being to, to hire more devs to do more of what you can see to turn this into a you know a bigger product as as fast as possible. The base game is going to be um, free to download. The idea to build a community around this game and then to add on 
lots of story-based downloadable content and all those kind of things. Um, so, you know, it's going to be insane. So Dan says, okay, so we are looking for 65,000 pounds. That's the, that's the Kickstarter target, uh, which is the bare minimum to bring um, a minimum viable product to early access. Okay, so that's, that is the target that, 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 that is being aimed for. Um, are you running over a month, Dan, or is it a two month Kickstarter? What's, what's the sort of duration of, of, of the Kickstarter? Um, Big Boo has to run away, sadly, real life calls. I'll catch the rest tomorrow on YouTube. Enjoy the rest of the evening, um, Drew. Thanks. Uh, Dan and Claire, it's amazing stuff. Okay, so it ends on the 19th of April. It... <laughs> I, I read that. <laughs> I could have gone down that, uh, the wrong road there, but I thought I better not. Uh, <laughs> it ends on the 19th of April, so it's going to last for a month. So um, I, I think during that time, we will be keeping very close eyes. And certainly, you know, the community of people who... who, who who know and follow me will will doubtless be incredibly interested in this. I I'd really encourage anybody who obviously has any spare cash they can chuck at a Kickstarter. And I know Kickstarters are, you know, there are risks involved, right? There are risks involved. We all know about, um, you know, Kickstarters that don't make it and the Kickstarters that don't deliver and all those kind of things. But um, I think what, what I would say about this is that, that that only applies to a handful of Kickstarters. And look at what has already been achieved by, you know, uh, by Dan, uh, you know, supported by Claire. Um, it's an amazing thing they've achieved, and they've achieved this in three years. Imagine what this crew could do with a bit of money, a bit of support, and some extra devs. And you know, do you want do you, do you want a starship? exploration game based in a one-to-one -one scale real galaxy um, that can do what you can see on the screen happening right now. Yes, you do, right? <laughs> Everyone get out there, spread the news, <laughs> find some money, steal some money, rob a bank, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> no, no. We, 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 don't, we don't condone illegal activity for fun Kickstarter. Um, but do you know what I mean? I, 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 yeah, it's, it's very, very, very exciting. And I would love to see you. Um, Dan, Dan and Claire, um, I mean, I've not met them in person, but I've spoken to them on, 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 on Twitch chat a number of times, seem like jolly nice people, okay, and I think they deserve lots and lots of support. Um, so I'm very, very keen to see um, what they can do with, with that, and, 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 and it, you know, just, and, and what an amazing game this has the potential to, I mean, it's already impressive, it's already amazing, but, you know, imagine this times 10, um, you know, with loads and loads of content, with loads and loads of um, finesse and completed and other spaceships and you know lots and lots of interactivity things to do on both on board and off board um, you know the ship it, it would be amazing it's an amazing vision it's 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 an ambitious vision but it's this exactly the sort of game that I want to play and I think if this becomes um, you know as good as I can imagine it to be um, then this this will be my go-to space game because it just combines everything I love about space games. The exploration, the sense of just getting out there and pointing at the star and going, let's go and see what's out there uh, and, and doing that sort of thing. And, and it's very clear that Dan and Claire share that passion for exploration and adventure and imagination and the sheer wonder that the scale of the galaxy, the scale of the cosmos just renders. This is, this is, I mean, Carl Sagan would like, if, if there was ever a game that Carl Sagan would play, this would be it, right? I mean, Carl Sagan, Patrick Moore, Brian Cox, I mean, maybe we should get in contact with Brian Cox, he'd love this. Um, yeah, uh, Daro Brian, in, all those people who love space. This is the game, right? This is the game that really captures it for me because it's, it's got astronomy first and foremost there's obviously a love of science fiction in there there's also a love of um you know all, all, all that stuff that goes with, with 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 space exploration tv and film franchises but exploration is front and center so you know so that's really good um so yeah it's it's an amazing thing and it really really needs um you know the community of of space game players to 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 to, to help make it happen i think i think dan and claire have done an amazing job of getting this far but um yeah, we the community, and you know, I'm, I'm saying a royal we there, and I don't speak on behalf of everybody, obviously, but um, you know, let's do what we can to give them all the possible support we can have, because I think it's an amazing thing that they've got so far, uh, and I would love to see them succeed. So there's a Kickstarter, runs for a month, starting tomorrow, £65,000 is the target. I hope they absolutely blow it away. 
um, during that time. But um, yeah, let's let's do what we can, my friends, to to to, to help them to help them raise those funds. I think that's that's going to be a very very worthwhile thing for all. I would love to play this game in its full full glory, and I'm sure you would as well. So let's let's um, let's see how it goes. Um, <laughs> Orkney Sean says, getting a chunk of, um, I, I need a new computer fund for sure. Yeah, so um, so that would be good. Um, I'm sorry, Your Honour, but I was told by Drew Wager to rob the High Street Bank. <laughs> uh, yes, indeed. So um, um, I would love to start getting people like that involved because it's also an educational game. Well, this is the thing that I think, you know, there's, there's huge potential, you know. Um, I did a little bit of science education with, with Elite Dangerous. I used Elite Dangerous, for example, in the talk I did on black holes and pulsars. Um, but I, I quickly switched to Space Engine because it was a lot more flexible. Um, but there were a few things that Elite Dangerous did better than Space Engine at the time, whereas, you know, Space Engine's possibly got a bit more eye candy now. But this, you know, the ability to learn about different star classes and visit it in a working starship and and maybe learn a little bit about things and you know all the possibilities of teamwork and all those other bits and pieces that come through computer games which don't get the credit they should have all of those things are um, you know insane um uh th those sort of things as well um Yes, you know, um, they've solved a good point space engineers you know i had a lot of fun with space engineers but it's having that realistic galaxy. That's the thing that really drives imagination. I enjoyed playing Star System with all its working Starship interiors. I mean, that's an amazing game as well. But the real galaxy isn't there. The real galaxy is the draw. Because, you know, you and I know that we'll never, ever get out into the galaxy in our lifetimes in any meaningful way. So a game like this is literally the next best thing. For those of us who grew up with Star Wars and Star Trek and just wanted to get out there and have a look at what the hell's out there in space and watched Carl Sagan's Cosmos and we watched Brian Cox's things on television, all those kind of things. This is, this is the game that allows us to actually fly out into space and explore stuff. <laughs> so excited. You can probably tell. Um, let's have a look at this nebula. I think we're literally flying through it now. I think we're on the literally on the outside edges. So, oh, I'm not sitting at my seat, am I? Let's get back into the helm's chair. So let's so we can watch outside the ship. I'm just going to leave the ship on full speed. So we are now on the outer borders of this nebula, and there are stars inside the nebula. Now you can probably see as we're flying through. There you go. That's a nice angle. It is a volumetric nebula. Okay, so it's a volumetric, so it has structure that you can go through. I, I don't know what, I mean, I, I don't, in fact, I don't even want to ask at this stage what gameplay will be associated with things like this, because I think that's going to be a surprise for us to find out when we get there, right? Um, um, so, um, uh, luckily all the stuff I want to see is not a fortnight away, so, <laughs> you know, so, um, so, um, um, Orkney Sean says, and once you have moved right, expect a weekly live stream as part of your crew bouncing from planet to planet. Well, I mean, we could just do that. When the, when the game is fully released, we could literally just live stream, oh, right, let's head out into the galaxy and see what happens. Yeah, I mean, I'd be up for that. Um, we'd have to have some auditions for crew members and maybe role play it properly and, and, and do it not, not, not seriously, seriously, because that wouldn't be me, but, you know, semi-seriously, you know, as if we're trying to do some stuff. Um, um, so you know, so that 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 that's a good thing. Um, Dan has this dream where an educator hosts a session with a group of people who want to learn astronomy or astrophysics, and the um, the educator could conduct floors and explain the Now, I must admit, Dan, that's a great. I would be up for that because I um, literally next week I am giving a talk at my local astronomical society on black holes. But imagine if I could basically say, by the way. <laughs> Join me on my warp-powered starship as I go and explore general relativity and quantum mechanics in a black hole. You know, so I would be up for that. I would be up for doing teaching sessions like that because I do a lot of um, astronomical presentations for, for astronomical societies on on astrophysics, astro you know, astro topics, and um, having a mechanism to make it real. I mean, the, just give it an idea of the vastness of space in a in a practically a semi-practical way. You know, that's a, that's a big deal. We could do a streaming series on those kind of things. It's, you know, absolutely fantastic. It's a really, really good idea. Um, and um, and anti P783, so th that's why I put those NASA put your name on the various ship um, rovers and things that are closer to actual space. I mean, so yeah, I completely get it. I got my name and my family's name on um, 
on new horizons. So those of you who remember the space probe that went first to Pluto and then to um, one of the other Kuiper Belt objects, um, yeah, that that's actually got a CD with my name on it, and probably some of you guys did something similar, right? Um, yeah, it's a little bit of space exploration as as best we could do. So you know, um, my my favourite two space probes, of course, Voyager One and Voyager Two, which I feel like I've sort of grown up with. I remember seeing them launch um, as a child in the seventies, and they're still travelling through space today, still doing some science, um, and um, yeah, that is. Um, yeah, that's just a lovely thing to have had, you know, throughout my entire life, really. And yeah, hopefully they, they still keep working for a little bit longer. Um, um, so, uh, and, and Dan says, what really hit me is how slow 2.5 million C is. The speed of light is the fastest thing out there. And yet on a galactic scale, it's practically stationary. So, yeah, so this is, we are traveling here at 2.5 million times the speed of light. And the galaxy is just slowly drifting past us in a rather pleasant sort of um, serene fashion really isn't it at this speed um, and I think you, I think you've hit a you know it feels like the ship is cruising um, so I don't, I don't know I mean if we overpower the reactor um, does that increase the speed of the ship a little bit or is, is 2.5 million like a, a a limitation of this ship design um, so you know the gas cloud is just drifting beautifully past us we actually threw and through most of it and then out the other side um it, it's just a glorious thing to watch you can do 110 percent, but please don't says organization <laughs> it goes up to about 2.8 million 110 percent. so if you if you need to get out somewhere and dodge you have got the option for a little bit more speed uh but the reactor will overheat fairly quickly and then it breaks and you're stuck and then presumably you have to repair things and you know all the other stuff that's that's involved with uh with, with doing this sort of thing so um uh yeah that's do not sit to 11. <laughs> boys when you play the guitar the speaker blows up doesn't it uh <laughs> um I, I just think it's absolutely staggering ambition that you've got on display here Dan I mean I just I really do I think it's an amazing thing and I certainly encourage anybody watching these streams to basically keep an eye on that Kickstarter uh, link that Dan posted and um, yeah bookmark that and let's let's see if we can get that um, that, that Kickstarter uh, across the line because it really is an amazing amazing thing and um, the idea of having the base game for free building the community and then allowing you know content to to be created on top of that to sort of fund it i, th I think is an amazing uh, approach as well um a real you know thank you to the you know the space exploration game community that wants to fly a starship like this um so uh, so that there's all sort of things good question there from freaky deaky dude can you spacewalk is there gameplay associated with going outside of the ship now i, I i'm assuming there could be because i don't know if there's any reason why we you couldn't have an airlock on the ship. I don't know if there is an airlock on the ship that would allow you access to the exterior hull um, or not. I don't know. Uh, that's that's a question for Dan, obviously. Um, so there we are. I think we're through the ship. Now I can control the ship manually. So I'm going to bank it, not bank it round. That's not the right word. Yaw it round. Okay, so Dan's talking about some EVA gameplay here where uh, you will need to don a spacesuit and get out onto the outer hull to repair sensor arrays and weapons, etc. Okay. <laughs> on the new ship design, there are four surface level airlocks on sea deck. Okay. Uh, surely the meter should read 110 but maximum, but this ship goes up to them. Um, so I'm just going to... Okay, so let's, let's click on a star here. Uh, well, let's let's go back inside the ship for a moment and let's see where we are, because any of these stars will do. Let's wait for a G-class star to come. In fact, there's one there. So let's grab that G-class star. Let's do that. Literally do that thing. Where we go? Where should we go? Uh, there's a G-class star there. Scan target. Okay. There's another one up there. Let's scan that one. We are seeing a bunch of G-class stars. Oh, 
that's what we've already scanned. Let's just scroll down the list. Gas dwarf. I love the way this screen is just automatically updating as we find more and more stuff. Lots of M class stars as well. So there's just lots of things going past us. Um, so okay, so there's going to be EVA gameplay as well, um, and we know that some of the um, the stellar phenomena are going to be dangerous. So we have in the previous stream we have seen um, um, you know black holes and things which do look amazing because they've got the kind of gravitational lensing and all that kind of good stuff that goes on with them. Um, oh there's actually the nebula itself is showing up. That's quite cool. So let's just drop into a random terrestrial planet near the star. But let's go to a star because I think seeing the star up close was quite good. Let's send that to the helm. Let's just tell it to use the sensor target. There we are. And let's tell it to engage. Oh, the alpha pilot is engaged. So does it automatically? I don't know if it maybe I need to disengage it and re-engage it. Oh no, I just need to engage it. There we go. It was disengaged. That's going to take us to a star that's close by. Let's watch it as it arrives. So this is a star that's in the nebula. Um, okay, so um, so M NPCs can handle tasks. You might want to stop it or we'll keep scrolling to the top. Okay, there's an actual toggle for that. Okay. Um, there was an O-class star. I missed that. So there's the actual core of the nebula there. Let's just randomly pick a star. So M-class is what a red dwarf, isn't it? Uh, you do get your exercises on the ship, <laughs> running forwards and back. If there's no class on, it's just the the. Uh, uh, let's just sit down again. Okay, so there's six targets in central range. Oh. I've lost them all. There's a K class or B. Oh, there's a B class. Should we go to that one? Let's let's go to that one. B class is pretty good. Let's go to that one. Go and have a look at a B class star. Uh, new sensor target. There we go. Ten light years away. Right. So the ship is now banking around again. What are we thinking? What's it doing? Who's in charge of this? So there. That's a B class star on the edge of. The nebula should be quite cool. You can use the filter buttons to find the O-class stars. Okay, um, so you, you've got a lot of you know astrophysics in there with the different star classifications and the different planetary classifications and all sorts of bits and pieces of it. Um, that iPad on the console to the left of the navigator is about to fall on the floor. Um, let's see what a B-class star is like, and then we'll see if we can find a. Um, uh, an O-class star, and that's oh my goodness! I mean, I mean like it's, it's already ten o'clock. Um, why do we need an O-class star? I don't know. Maybe it just looked cool. I think that's probably what it is. Let's let's try a B-class star and see what that looks like. Um, and and I know there are black holes and things inside the game as well, and there's going to be all sorts of other astronomical phenomena. Sorry, <laughs> in the game as well. Um, okay, so O-type stars are uncommon. And the new navigation AI. Uh, so please you make your mind up. Right, we are coming into range. We'll just have. We'll just take a look at the star. Uh, at, at kind of range here, and then and then my streaming time is already up. So Dan, in in the in the fading minutes, Dan Dan and Claire, obviously in the fading minutes of um, the um, uh, of 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 the stream in terms because we're we're almost out of time again. Um, is there anything you'd like to highlight? Of, you know, what, what's coming up? Any what sort of ideas you have? Anything about the Kickstarter that you know we could really do with um, just highlighting for you um, at, at, at this stage? Just any, anything you've got that you'd like us to, you know, just to to, to, to talk about for a moment. Um, Captain Pogbosch says, "I usually find black holes are not usually good things to fly near to." Yeah, it's, it's 
Good advice, my friend. Good advice. Um, so O-class stars are currently the biggest, scariest stars in the game. You could also only find them uh, in open clusters. So that's a good question. So, um, Dan, things like globular clusters um, that would normally be found around the edge of the galaxy, uh, is, is that something that we will find in the game at some point? Um, oh, here look, we are coming into a... Whoa, okay, so this is very, very bright. Um, very bright indeed. I hope that's going to... Okay, so we've... we've got <laughs> coming very, very, very close to this star. That, that looks insanely bright. So from inside the ship, I think it's probably a good idea that we switch on the uh, switch on the the protective thing, window controls. There we go. There we go. So I've switched that on. So that actually dims down the view, so we can actually see what's going on. So we're actually really close to this star, and we can see. Yeah, the surface of it. Look at it sort of fusing away there. It's just, wow, that does look good. Um, and we're sort of sitting in the crest. Probably not the best place for our ship to be, really, is it that close to a star? But there we go. Um, okay, so Dan says, the very next thing I'm working on with the game over the coming weeks is planetary scanning. And that will also include the beginning of the code used for generation of alien civilizations. Okay. Um, Claire says, if everyone could please share the Kickstarter posts when you see them, I'll be eternally grateful. OK, so um, so um, there's there's obviously you know all the different social media categories, there's various discords and stuff. So, folks, if you've got an opportunity to share um, any, any of the things that comes up on the Kickstarter, because presumably um, there's going to be various little drops of Kickstarter -y content. Uh, along the way, videos and you know images and all those sort of things, then please um, please do help the guys out by sort of just spreading the word as much as you can. That would be really really good. Um, so yeah, the great idea, uh, Claire. Um, Dan also says that the whole galactic halo is included in the generation region, and that will include globular clusters. So that's one thing that we've not seen in any other game either. So for those of you who don't know, a globular cluster is basically a, a fairly ancient group of um, stars which are gravitationally bound together in a clump. And you can see them, um, M13 is probably the, the most well-known one. Now, um, these sort of things don't exist in games like Elite Dangerous because there's, there isn't a mechanism to have, uh, well, at least they don't think they've modeled globular clusters outside the, the galaxy. Because these globular clusters sit maybe, I don't know how many light years, but probably um, 15, I don't know, how far, how far is a globular cluster away? I don't know. <laughs> Somebody will know. Um, um, but they're outside the main galactic disk. They're bunches of stars, like almost like mini galaxies of maybe two, 3,000 stars packed in a ball um, that are kind of orbiting around the outside of the galaxy. Um, OK, Dan says usually 60 to 90k light years away. And they are, they're, they're gravitationally bound to the Milky Way, but there's no way to get to them, you know, jumping from star to star. So you'd have to travel uh, a long way. So, you know, even for... Uh, even for a um, you know fictional starship like this one, you know a, a journey to well actually a journey to a um, global class is going to be a bit of a challenge, isn't it? If you if you're going to need to refuel along the way, um, that's going to be a challenge to get to other thoughts at the moment. Um, so that that could be yeah, an interesting challenge for for one of these ships to get to a global cluster because there's nowhere to refuel on the way at the moment. So, you know, that's going to be quite good. Um, so you know, but yeah, the fact that you're going to be able to find ways to visit things like that. Um, so you know you've got all the all the classics in space exploration black holes pulsars neutron stars all that kind of cool stuff you've got lots and lots of weird and wonderful planets you're going to have nebulae in there you're going to have um, you know the the globular clusters so um, I suppose another question uh, for you Dan is you know things that we uh, we are familiar with things like the Orion Nebula um, you know the crab pulsar, um, you know the cat's eye nebula, all of those things. Are, are, you gonna, are you going to attempt to render those in, you know, as realistic a way as you can for how they actually look in in space, or at least the images that we get from you know Hubble and the, the James Webb Space Telescope? So you know, is that um, is there an intention to take the Messier catalog, for example, and try and implement those in 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 the game as as as, as realistically as possible? Um, okay, so Dan says the number of stars in the galactic halo is roughly zero to five per one thousand light year cubed. Okay, so you might be able to um, move your way through that 
uh, fit in terms of refueling if you can find the other things. Um, okay, so um, Commander says you could build a Dyson Sphere as fueling stations at midway points. That would be <laughs> that would be an undertaking. Oh, well, Dyson Sphere would be a cool thing to see. And Dan says also, okay, so yet one of the things we will be using the funding for, okay, so this is funding from the Kickstarter period, is to get artists to make volumetric versions of known nebulae. So we could go and visit you know, big, famous nebulae sites that are out there in the universe. Um, volumetric nebulas that you can fly around and then investigate the internals of. Oh, brilliant. Uh, will there be sp space structures or stations, says Freaky Deaky Doo? That's another question. So um, I imagine Dan will want to keep some of his power to drive for the Kickstarter, but uh, if, if, he, if he's able to let us know any of the answers to these questions. I think what we probably do, Dan, um, I'll, I'll probably do another stream for you during your, uh, at least one more stream, possibly more than that, during your Kickstarter, A, to check in on how it's going and, 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 and to keep the interest up, but also um, maybe we could have um, some sort of QA sessions um, and things around the game and what's you know what what's going on and stuff that you revealed in the quick start. I think a QA session with you know what's you know come along, ask your questions of put Dan and Claire on the spot and see what what they can't just to kind of you know all the questions that kind of come out as people start um, getting to grips with the vision that you've got planned. I think I think that would be really really cool. Um, Dan says he'd be happy to hop on the stream anytime. Brilliant. Okay, so alien structures are definitely planned as well. Um, so yeah, there's, there's just an insane amount of things coming. So I think I think we will um, we'll, we'll we'll wait with bated breath for the Kickstarter as it comes out. Um, so I, what I'm going to do now it's I'm going to head back to Earth because that's that's clearly what we got to do, um, and then obviously we'll go down to the bar. Um, we we'll, I haven't had time today to show you the multiplayer stuff, which is another whole thing. But we will we'll definitely do that as well. Uh, during your Kickstarter phase, so that that would be really good. Um, now, how would I, how would I find Earth again from here? Because um, is there a way to recall a? I wouldn't know how to do it. <laughs> I'm lost in the depths of the universe. Remember to press the home key on your keyboard to target Earth when you're sat at the helm. Right. Okay. That makes sense. You can't actually get lost in the galaxy. So let's press home. Right. There we go, 150 light. Well, obviously, we're um, um, let's just engage the autopilot. There we go. Well, the ship will just take us home, and that, that's a, that's a nice way for us to leave. Um, so um, let's wander off, and we'll head to the back of the ship because the, the tradition is we always have a beer at the end of the ship. Um, I'm just going to watch that star disappear for a start because we're obviously heading directly away from it. Sorry, this is going to look a bit wobbly. So that if I engage the whoa. If I engage the drive correctly, we should be flying through space. Did I engage the FTL drive? I don't think I did, did I? Um, <laughs> let me just go and switch the engines on. Are we moving? No, I don't think we are. Um, I think I the autopilot's on, but the engines aren't engaged, are they? Let's go and do that. And then we'll just watch that star recede as we head in the general direction of Earth. Uh, there we go, engage FTL. Uh, there we go. Are we definitely moving now? There we go. I didn't engage. No, I didn't. There you go. Look, I can just see the star disappearing, even if I'm running as I'm running backwards to it. Um, <laughs> there it goes. Look, Ooh. there's the star that we literally just left disappearing into the void, uh, and all its associated planets as well. That's just amazing, isn't it? Um, so all that really remains for me. So um, one more time, Dan. Um, bung the Kickstarter link into the chat. So everybody make sure you've grabbed a copy of that link. Please, please share it on behalf of Dan and Claire to um, make sure that uh, we get that um, uh, is uh, you know, as widely um, 
publicised as possible. Um, I'll link it into the YouTube upload of this video as well, so it's got a got a link there. And um, I know a few other sort of notable YouTubers and Twitchers have done some streams for you as well. I was, I was pleased to see that Obsidian Ant has, has, has highlighted as well. So that's that's really good news because he's got incredible reach on his stream. He's a huge fan of space exploration. I met him a number of times. He's a great guy. Um, so um, yeah, so there's a lot of community folks behind you, Dan and Claire. All I can say really is absolute best of luck with the Kickstarter. Um, we will um, revisit um, the stream as well. Uh, um, check in how you're doing. We'll, we'll keep doing it. We'll keep, we'll keep highlighting the, the amazing work that you've been doing. And um, I wish you absolutely, and I'm, probably, I'm sure on behalf of everybody who's watching the stream right now, wish you um, the, um, the very, very best of luck with the Kickstarter. We're, we're very much behind you um, and we will do our best to um, highlight what you're doing and, um, uh, and, and, and you know, try and ensure a success uh, as much as possible. So, um, you know, congratulations on what you've achieved so far. It is a remarkable thing. I think you've done, an, a, you know, you've got an incredible vision. You really, really, really deserve to succeed. And, um, you know, I, you know, on behalf of all of us here, I, I really, really, really hope you do. You certainly deserve it. You certainly deserve it. And I can't wait to see what you guys come up with. So all power to you. Best of luck. And I uh, <laughs> hope it all goes really, really, really well. Uh, for you, it's been um, it, it's it's been it's been it's a fantastic thing to watch, fantastic thing to be involved in, even in a small way. And um, yeah, looking, can't wait to see what you do with the Kickstarter uh, tomorrow as well. So it it is an amazing thing. Congratulations. Um, I am going to uh, simply grab a beer. I've grabbed some wine already, but I'm going to grab a beer as well because obviously, beer. Um, I'm going to take that over. Look at this. I'm going to take that over to that. Plunk it on the table there sit at the chair and then <laughs> it's good to enjoy the moment um thank you everybody for watching um thank you obviously to dan and claire for for jumping in the stream i appreciate it was slightly short notice only at the end of last week um but um Thank you ever so much and thank you for being good sports and answering all the questions and putting up with the general craziness on the stream um so thank you everybody else on the stream for your questions interaction uh please support dan and claire as much as you can uh through all the you know, all the usual channels um and uh, best of luck to dan and claire we'll look forward with bated breath to what you come with the kickstarter um have a fantastic week ahead my friends um, i will see you on thursday for some uh, some some other space exploration game that uh, you've probably heard of um Take care, guys, and uh, have a fantastic week ahead. I will see you soon. Be good. And as always, right on Retro Commanders. <laughs> Headache coming, beer and wine, yes. Um, take care, Dan. Take care, Claire. Um, thank you ever so much for, uh, for this amazing game. We will speak soon, no doubt. And best of luck for tomorrow. Hope it all goes fantastically well for the launch of your Kickstarter. All the best. Take it easy, guys. See you soon.